Joining us now is Dr. Marshall Shepard, Weather Channel Meteorologist and Director of the University of Georgia's Atmospheric Sciences Program. Dr. Shepard, I want to start just with a basic question. Why is this two degree temperature goal, atmospheric temperature goal is a part of this agreement, why is that so important? Yeah, that's a great question and one that I, I really tried to address just this morning in my most recent Forbes column. Why two degrees? Where did that come from? Uh, two degrees really was put forth uh, back in the 1970s as a target threshold by an economist at Yale, uh, but the scientific literature has then suggested that that is likely the tipping point uh, for some of the ir irreversible changes in the climate system that we as scientists worry about, uh, continue with locking us in for sea level rise, uh, changes in agricultural productivity, changes in warm season sea ice. We think that is the threshold uh, for uh, some of this irreversible change. So if that's the tipping point, are, did this agreement do something to get towards that? Is it going to meet the, miss the tipping point? We think it gets us halfway there. Uh, it's a starting point. I, 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 it was my birthday yesterday. When I heard about the agreement, I said, boy, what a great uh, birthday present. It's, it gets us halfway there. But one of the really interesting things, if you read through the details of this new agreement, it really, uh, in five years out, it requires countries to uh, be more aggressive about some of their targets as we move forward, and that's, that's very important for us. But uh, if, if it's only halfway there, uh, that, w w how do we get to the other half? Well, I think that's where we see this cascading or rolling or building in terms of the, the targets that the 195 plus countries agreed to. And I, I want to make the point that this is very different from previous agreements like Kyoto, which left uh, some of the big emitting countries like China out. What's important about this particular agreement is it really brings everybody into the tent and gets a commitment from everyone to reduce their uh, emission levels. It's a part of this mitigation of climate change. It also has key provisions in there for adapting, suggesting that some things are already going to happen and we need to adapt to them. So it's not just though in terms of meet, meeting this crucial tipping point or avoiding the tipping point, meeting the crucial goals, it's not just that they all got together in a room and made out an agreement. There needs to be constant vigilance in terms of keeping these goals. That is correct. Uh, this is really the start of something that will cascade or roll through the next several decades. Uh, it requires countries, and there's a counting of these reductions, and it also requires these countries to actually, uh, in the next reporting period, out three, five years, to actually uh, produce more aggressive uh, uh, targets as well. And that will be key to keeping us at that two degree level. And one of the really interesting things I want to note there's even language in the new agreement that even tries to keep us at one and a half degrees because there are some studies in the peer-reviewed literature that suggest that some of the island-faring nations and some of the uh, more developing nations may be more vulnerable even at one and a half degree of warming. Was there anything else in the deal other than these goals that uh, you think is important in terms of addressing climate change? Yeah, I thought one of the really interesting things that jumped out for me, one, was the uh, really emphasis on the role of deforestation and, and changing landscapes. That is actually in its way also an emitter as we lose forests. Those are uh, sinks, if you will, for CO2 in the atmosphere. So there's really uh, strong language in there in terms of, of deforestation and preservation of landscape. The other thing that's really important for me in this, and I know that there's some that are worried about the economic impacts, it really, many corporations, the, NA, the U.S. military are very much in support of some of the things that we saw in this. So this is not just about a bunch of egg-headed scientists like me worried about the climate or the environment. Corporations, 150 of those, are now signing on right. the uh, aspects of this as well, and I right. think that is key.